been uh, reading and writing about uh, bank for at least the last two decades, and it all started by accident when the bank victim uh, contacted me after something I'd written about farming finance, and I've been uh, hearing from bank victims ever since. I must say that even though I was a dissident in university, part of the political economy crowd with Frank Stilwell, uh, a lot of my radicalism was a product of uh, book learning. And it's really only since I've been hearing from all these bank victims and their experience and reading around it, I've really confronted how truly corrupt the system is. You, can't, you cannot read about it. Uh, you know, uh, because it's, it's out there in the ether, and it's systematic and it's all pervasive. So you've got a, uh, a banking system that's hierarchical in Australia, the big four, all corrupt. They, com they don't compete. Uh, not one bank competes in, uh, in terms of ethics, integrity and competence. And the second tier, uh, a lot of them were gobbled up by the big four, those that remain uh, merely copy what the big four do because they can get away with it and they're equally as bad. So uh, there is no, it, uh, there's no one you can turn to. Uh, so the Royal Commission, uh, it was under, only under extreme pressure, ironically, from uh, Queensland because there's a lot of nasty things happening in Queensland, the government finally relented, but the, uh, uh, the Royal Commission, it, it has dealt with a, a handful of individuals and there's a lot of shock horror stuff, uh, but it, it is still skimming the surface and, and one could readily conclude rotten apples and the banks are constantly saying, uh, we're sorry, crocodile tears, and, and we're fixing up our system. But, of course, between the lines, the banks are totally unrepentant and after the uh, commission finishes, it'll be business as usual. So, so what the commission has failed to do, and really this, you know, there's a huge amount of personnel behind uh, Hain, uh, is, is to try and look behind what is producing this uh, range of of uh, damn, damnable uh, offences right across the financial sector, financial advice, super. My particular experience has been with small business and farmers, uh, and there's devastation out there, uh, uh, in, especially in the farming community, suicides. By pure chance, coincidence, I went, I was at a meeting at Parliament House uh, on Tuesday, organised and a lot of bank victims turned up and I heard some horror stories. Uh, you know a lot and you still can't believe what you hear. The tragedy is that it was Senator Fraser Anning's advisor who organised this uh, meeting. Uh, strange things happened in Queensland. Uh, the advisor was wearing a Stetson hat during the interviews. Uh, uh, and so Annie himself heard all days of the terrorism of banks and yet in the evening, he's in that introductory speech, he, he goes on to some mythical terrorism about, uh, about Muslims. So he missed the, the real nature of terrorism in this country and of course the papers uh, lapped it up. Now, let's get to the structure of the problem to complement what Joe has said. Six features, I'll, I'll list them and then go back on them. Uh, what, why do we have such a uh, fundamental corruption in, in what is a fundamental public service and, and necessary for, for functioning of the economy and society? First, comprehensive financial deregulation during the 80s. Second, the relationship between bank lender and borrower is unequal, deeply asymmetric, and the, the lender has the power of life or death over the borrower. Third, 
uh, the, the bank in treating its customers corruptly uses a wide range of other, quote, professions, joke, uh, the legal profession. Uh, so if you want to take down a business or a farm, uh, you call in your law firms, then the receivers, you devalue the property via corrupt valuations uh, so that the, the, the property that's held as security for the loan suddenly isn't worth very much. So the valuers are corrupt, the real estate agents, the sheriffs paid by the public purse who uh, turf out the owner on the street, the bankruptcy trustees, the full range of complicit uh, professional uh, uh, people. That, that's the third element. The fourth element is the regulators, which Joe mentioned, ASIC, the financial regulator. Uh, uh, FOSS, Financial Ombudsman Service, a supposedly independent uh, ombudsman which mediates between lender and borrower, and APRA, uh, the, uh, the uh, regulatory authority. Uh, that's, that's the fourth. Fifth, the courts, uh, in, in the ultimate, uh, 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 foreclosed uh, borrowers go to the courts to, to win their battle. That's a hopeless asymmetric situation. And finally, as, as Joe said, the politicians. So there's the six elements of, of the structure which all combine uh, to, uh, to screw uh, the, the, the bank customer and mercilessly. Very quickly on each of those six, uh, six elements of the deep structure which the Royal Commission has failed to acknowledge, and I must say, I'm, I'm speaking from my submission to the Royal Commission, and all they had to do was call me up and interview me, and uh, they could have been set on the wrong straight. And indeed, some of the victims have been harassing the Royal Commission to interview me, but they won't go near me. Uh, so uh, the Royal, the financial deregulation in you know, there was a committee called the Campbell Committee, 1981. They were all part of the problem, uh, and they didn't look at why regulation has, has been uh, uh, developed in the past. Uh, they didn't pursue the history of Ben Chifley's antagonism and his regulation of the banks for the post-war period. So and everything was swept away, and one would have to say uh, the Hawke Keating governments, especially Keating, uh, uh, and a drew advice from Treasury are intimately involved in, in this process. And there has been no mere culpa among, from the Labor Party since then. And they're all terrified of the legacy of Hawke Keating. Maybe we got it wrong. Nobody in office is saying maybe we got it wrong. The only person is John Hewson, for Christ's sake, and he's now irrelevant. But he was an integral part of the deregulation uh, push under John Howard uh, as treasurer. Uh, so that's deregulation. Uh, secondly, the asymmetry. The, the contract between the bank and a small business or a farmer is, is a contract of servitude. And the bank can default a borrower uh, at will. So, you know, the, the farmer, you know, or the small business, they're up, they're borrowing several million possibly, you know, 100,000, half a million, several, several million, 100 million. But the, the bank can invent means to default them at will and at, at will. And the dominant thing the bank takes as security is the family residence. That, that's the first thing to go, then they take the lot, and if they've taken security over the, the business person's parents' residence as well, which they want, they'll take that as well, and the whole fact extended family has lost the lot. And once they've lost their residence, consistently I find the people who contact me, uh, they're living in a shed or a caravan in their kid's backyard, and they're living on welfare. And that's happening right throughout the country. And the worst example of this is when the CBA took over 
Bank West in December 2008 after the GFC at the Labor government's bidding to uh, maintain stability in the system. CBA took down about 900 developers, hoteliers, totally corrupt, and you know they're, they're still jumping up and down, but it, that, that's the massive example of fraud. So there's the asymmetry, the third element, the complicity, uh, law firms, decent lawyers don't go anywhere near banks. The banks uh, have, have all their coterie of corrupt law firms. Uh, you name the law firm, they're corrupt. Despicable, you wouldn't spit on them. Uh, decent lawyers never go near the banking system, so they're somewhere else. And so the, this cor corrupt just pervades the whole, the whole system. Uh, the regulators, the point, the fourth point, ASIC. I don't understand the culture there. <coughs> totally piss work. In, 90, in 2001, they were given legislative responsibility for unconscionable conduct in financial services. Uh, they haven't taken a single case against the bank. Uh, and I have got correspondence from the ASIC to the victims uh, small business farmers in which ASIC tells them, uh, as they said to Joe, uh, bugger off. Uh, and, and they lie to them about their capacities or they tell them to go to the courts. It, it, the complicity is staggering. We've seen a bit of that with the financial advice in the whistleblower Jeff Morris in the papers. Uh, you, you know, I, I know there is at least three ex-students of Frank and mine who were decent chaps. One was a very close friend uh, who's now very high up in ASIC and I can't for the life of me work out what's going on, how they get captured, totally co corrupt. I mean. <laughs> They're on good pay. The Ombudsman system is supposed to be independent. The Ombudsman service is financed by the bank. I've seen all the evidence. But apart from some trivial cases going to the victim, they, they operate for the bank, totally corrupt. APRA is only interested in the stability of the banks, that means the profitability of the banks, so the victims are casualties of the system, they don't give a damn. The courts, now I could spend all night talking about the courts, I'm not a lawyer, but reading a lot of judgments is the most painful thing. And sitting in a court with a victim, that is terrifying. That, that is a terrifying experience because the whole atmosphere is against the victim. All their funds are gone anyway, and perennially they find the bank has bought off their own lawyer if they can afford them. Now that, that is a devastating discovery and, and so uh, the, the, even if the, the, law, the judge considers himself independent, the nature of, ju of judges and legal education is such that they think that the parties at litigation are of equal standing. So I'll read you from uh, a, the dominant textbook where all our well-paid banking lawyers come from. The lender-borrower relationship is based on contract and the parties deal at arm's length with no obligation on either party to act any higher, to act with any higher duty uh, to each other than that required by the law of the mar marketplace. So there, there are equal standing and there's no rules in the law of the marketplace. And another key judgment of the High Court uh, by uh, the Chief Justice then, Gleeson, he effectively said the law of the marketplace is the law of the jungle and that party that has the greatest power has not merely the right but the obligation to, pers to use that power to good effect. So this is the court system, and that's even for judges who are straight down the line. There are also judges who are corrupt, uh, who are on the pay. So that's the courts, and finally the police. Uh, Joe dealt with them as well. I've, uh, you know, the, I've seen the victims go to their local MP, their senators. Uh, they've tried to get support. 
uh, it's, it's a lost cause. The last person to take a uh, bank victim seriously was Democrat Senator Paul McLean in the late 80s, early 90s. He was treated abominably by Labor in office and everybody else and, and forced out of, of Parliament effectively. And he was, a, he was a wreck after that for a long time. So all MPs know the rules. I think probably the party funding is, is a key reason. There might be brown bags under the, the table, it might be just sheer, sheer cowardice, but it, uh, it, see, it, the victim goes to their MP, uh, they, they will be told, go to FOSS, uh, the Ombudsman, or you've got to go to the courts. Uh, most spectacular here is the National Party. Uh, you know, people, you know, they have sold out the family farmer comprehensively and they just sit on their bums. Uh, so there is supreme inaction there and, uh, and it, 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 it all sits there and you get, uh, it, because there's formal regulation, the, uh, the, the, the banks the, the, the political apparatus more or less says it's all working to good effect. Uh, and so it's, the regulation is actually worse than if there was none because it's there as a facade, but it's contributing uh, to the problem. And so the preamble to the Royal Commission uh, uh, terms of reference has to whoever wrote the damn stuff says, oh, this is one of the best, uh, most vibrant, stable banking systems in the world. And in yeah, effect, we don't need a royal commission. So, uh, so that, that's the state of play. And uh, I'll just finish with one more sentence. We can go back to that later, possibly. That I, I've also looked at a range of mechanisms that have developed over the last 150 years, years where there's actually been public acknowledgement of the asymmetry of power between banks and their customers. And so new institutions have been put in place, so like public banks, but consistently all those institutions that have been put in place to offset the asymmetry of power have been uh, uh, reduced, uh, emasculated or disappeared, reduced to inaction. So this, this current structure is not there by accident. It's consistently being reproduced for the benefit of, of the banking system and, uh, and, and those that run it. Thank you. Okay.